Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, my apologies for being late. I was setting up some things here uh, in my computer because I, I just need to set up some things here with the platform because I was enrolling to um, class that we have to develop here in, in the platform, guys. So my apologies for being late. And uh, we're going to start with with the class that corresponds for tonight's <laughs> session. Uh, we're going to be working some exercises um, on the platform, we, or we also were going to work on um, some topics in section number two. Uh, just let me share my screen. Give me just one moment. Okay. Um, we're going to start the section number two. I don't remember, I don't know if uh, I, if I left you um, uh, homework, you have homework for tonight class? No. Sí, un texto que nos dejó. Oh, cierto, el, el short story, ¿verdad? Sí. Ok, ¿lo leyeron? A ver, levante la mano, ¿quién lo leyó? Lisa, Diego, Ajá, Claudia, pocos, vaya, solo como tres logré contar, tres, cuatro, bien, un segundito, estoy tratando de compartir la pantalla, pero no me permite, <coughs> so give me just one moment, we're going to start with session number two. Here we have, okay, there you have. Okay, now let me just check this and I guess it's going to be like this. Okay, there, there we have. Um, this is the section, <clears throat> so, I mean, section number two. Um, you know, we're going to be working on topic, does it have a view? So that, that's the, the that's equations. The, um, and also this is the uh, unit name, okay? So let's start with section number two. We're going to see some um, lesson objectives, okay? Uh, the first lesson objective, it says by the end of this class, you will learn vocabulary for talking about places in houses and apartment, okay? So th this is the, the, uh, the main purpose for tonight's session. Um, we're going to be also watching some, some videos related to this. First of all, um, I want you to pay attention to this video when I see some vocabulary, so there you, can you have, can you see, I uh, mean, on a slide with different uh, nouns, okay? So wanna take a look of this. Uh, please pay attention. Uh, you're gonna see also the subtitles here in the right. I don't know if you can see. You see the subtitles in Spanish? Pueden ver los subtítulos ustedes en español, aquí en a la derecha? Yes. See, so yes. there, there you're gonna see there you're gonna see the meaning of some words and also you know in the conversation I wanna be listening in this part. Okay, so pay attention, please. No, my friend. Teacher, no escuchamos el audio. Okay, thank you for letting me know that. That's right. So I haven't shared the sound yet. Okay, give me just a moment. Let's start again, okay? So let me know if you cannot listen the audio. Hi, everyone. In this class, you'll learn vocabulary for talking about places in houses and apartments. Let's get started by listening and repeating. House. The house has two floors, a garage, and a yard. The first floor has a living room, a dining room, a kitchen, a laundry room, and stairs to the second floor. The second floor has a hall, three bedrooms, and a bathroom. Every bedroom has a closet. Apartment the apartment building has a lobby and an elevator. 
Every apartment has a living room, a kitchen, a dining room, a bedroom, a bathroom, and a closet. Now it's your turn to practice the vocabulary that we just heard. I would like for you to describe your home. Let me provide the following questions to help you do that. What rooms are in your house? What rooms are in houses in your country? What rooms are in apartments in your country? Okay, wanna stop there because we're going to do this exercise. Then we have two different questions, okay? Now I'll be asking you. Uh, for instance, Diego, Diego Valdez, can you please open your microphone? Okay, turn your microphone on. Okay, yeah. thank you, Diego. Thank you, uh, Diego. Um, what rooms are you in your house? Um, in my in my house um, are three three rooms. Three rooms. Which ones? Um, two bedroom and living room. Ah, okay. You have a living room and also two bedrooms. Okay. Do you have Do you have a kitchen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that means you have four. Uh, let me see. You have a laundry room. Um, laundry room? No, no. No, no. Okay. In a dining room? Yes. Yes. Okay. That means you have five different rooms. And um, let me see here. Elisa. Elisa? Hi. Good evening. Yes. Okay. Good evening. What about you? Um, what rooms are in your house? Uh, Three. Three. Which ones? Three. Um, it's gonna be better if I if I this. Okay. Uh, let me just show you this part. Okay, there you have. So the living room. Okay, you have a living room. What else? In kitchen. You have a kitchen. Okay. Just that. Do you have a dining room? Dining room. Yes. Ah, okay. So good. Um, I guess you have a bedroom. How many bedrooms do you have? One, two. Mm, two. Two bedrooms. Okay, good. Excellent. Um, Christian. Can you please open your microphone? Thank you, Elisa. Christian Elias, can you please uh, turn your microphone on? Thank you, Christian. Okay, Christian, um, tell me, how many, um, uh, what rooms are in your house? Uh, in my house, uh, living room. Okay. What else? John a garage and a yard okay um bedroom do uh, you have a bedroom too uh kitchen oh a kitchen good a dinner room and a dinner room okay good thank you for letting letting um me ask it i mean let me know that information and thank you for sharing all of those. Um, so let's see who else is here. I'm gonna check the list. Um, let me just take a look. Claudia. Okay. Um, hi. <laughs> hi, Claudia. For you here in El Salvador, okay, in, in El Salvador. Um, if there are some houses that are like, uh, has some sunners. What do you consider here in El Salvador um, houses having in, in the first floor or second floor? So it depends on, on, on the, the house that we are going to see. For instance, if we have a house, a general house, regular um, house my, here in El Salvador. My, uh, mm -hmm. my house? No, 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 uh, not your house. Uh, house in general. Uh, Aquí en El Salvador. Oh. Este, una casa... Eh, ¿Qué considera que tiene eh, o, o cuál es lo esencial para los salvadoreños? En una casa. ¿Cuáles son las, las, las salas? Eh, eh, 
kitchen okay uh, kitchen no um living room a living room too yes dining room i don't know dining room probably mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm. Mm. laundry room a laundry okay okay good I guess we have the, the those rooms here in Salvador, those places um, in our house. But also we can include bedroom, a bathroom, okay, okay. Um, stairs in case of we we have a, a second floor, um, in in a garage, okay. I I, I think that probably here in Salvador, uh, most people have a living room, a kitchen, a garage, a bedroom, and a bathroom, okay. Um, okay. Probably. This is probably no. I'm not sure about that. Okay, so probably we have there are some more houses that have different like, like places. For instance, there are houses like that that have a dining room. So th this is just my point of view, but I, 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 that's the reason I was asking you. But do you consider we have here in Salvador? Okay. Um. In do we have apartments here also? And um, these are composed by a bedroom, a closet, a dining room, a living room, an elevator, a kitchen too, a, a, if we live in a, an apartment, okay? There, there are some apartments that have the, these kind of things, more, also have some, some other places uh, for, for instance, uh, when someone lives in, in an apartment, they usually have like different commodities, like um, they usually have a gym, or a pool, okay, a community pool for for that building. Uh, okay, so let let's move on. When I see, when I check some other things here, give me just one moment. Let me <coughs> minimize this, and also move to the second part. Okay. They take a look at this lesson objective, and it says by the end of this class, you will learn how to respond to just no questions in simple present. Additionally, you will practice a conversation about apartment, um, which illustrates how this topic is used in real life settings, okay? That's gonna be the aim for this lesson. Uh, pay attention to the exercise, I mean, the information here uh, in the video, and then we're going to move on to extend uh, more information regarding to the just no questions with simple present, of course. Uh, let's pay attention. Hi everyone. In this class you'll learn how to respond to yes or no questions in the simple present. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation about an apartment, which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's get started by listening to a conversation. My new apartment. This conversation illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's listen and practice. Guess what? I have a new apartment. That's great. What's it like? It's really beautiful. Is it very big? Well, it has a big living room, a small bedroom, a bathroom, and a kitchen. Where is it? On Lakeview Drive. Oh, nice. Does it have a view? Yes, it does. It has a great view of another apartment building. Now let's try to understand. Simple. Okay, before wow. moving. Just one moment. I'm gonna check this. Before moving to, to the part that is going to explain about the uses of just equation, uh, simple present, we need to practice this conversation. So I need two volunteers. I don't know. We have volunteers for tonight's session. Do we have volunteers for tonight's session? Okay, Diego, who else? Any other volunteer? Probably a girl? A girl? Another volunteer? We have Diego, who else? Um, let, let's check, Cindy, uh, Claudia, Fatima, so you. Uh, Cindy, okay, Cindy, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, participating in this conversation. So, Diego, are you ready? 
Yes. Okay. Um, Diego, you're going to be Chris and Cindy, you're going to be Linda. Okay. Okay. So go ahead, practice this conversation. Okay. Uh, guess what? I have a new apartment. That's great. What's it like? It's really beautiful. Is it very big? Well, it has a big living room, a small bedroom, a bathroom, and a kitchen. Where is it? On Lakeview Drive. Oh, nice. <laughs> does it um, have an, a view? Yes, it does. It has a great view of another apartment building. <laughs> Okay, good. Thank you for uh, participating. I need two other volunteers. Two other volunteers. Um, Claudia, you want to participate? Yes? Okay, good. Uh, who else? I need a gentleman. Okay. Hey. Um, who else? Let me see Jonathan, Rene. Melvin, oh, Christian. Okay, Christian, go ahead. So, Christian, you're gonna be a uh, Chris and Claudia, you're gonna be Linda, okay? Okay. Try to do, try to do it with enthusiasm, like like if you were there, if you were these people, okay? So, go ahead. Okay. Well, well, I have a new apartment. That's great. What is like? It's really beautiful. Well, it has big living room, a small, a small room, a bar room, and chicken, a kitchen. Where is it? Oh, there, I don't know. Lakeview Drive. Oh, leave it dry. Lakeview Drive. Late view, view drive. right drive view okay right. good go ahead Chris oh nice that it have a view yes it does it has a great view of another apartment another apartment building okay apartment good view. okay good good excellent just um uh, you know if you listen to the last part that like Linda says, yes, it does. It has a great view of another apartment building. You know, she doesn't have a good view because it is just another a, a apartment that she's looking at. Eh, si, si ven la última parte, es un poco gracioso porque le pregunta, ¿verdad? ¿Tienes una buena vista? Eh, y, y ella le responde, sí, la tengo, dice. Tengo una gran vista de otro, de otro edificio. <laughs> De apartamento realmente no tiene una buena vista de este mm. que, que se puede tiene una pared <laughs> correcto mm. <laughs> esa es la gran vista so that's the great view that she has so let's move on we're gonna be working some other uh, things here because you remember the the aim of this lesson it's to learn how to respond to just no question how to answer to just no question so uh, we're going to continue with this part uh, let me just take a look here. I guess it's going to be on this side. Do the bed. Short answers. Yeah. I would like for you to notice the. I have a new a big living room, a small bedroom, a bathroom, and a kitchen. Where is it? On Lakeview Drive. Oh, nice. Does it have a view? Yes, it does. It has a great view of another apartment building. Now, let's try to understand simple present short answers i would like for you to notice the chart on the screen do you live in an apartment yes i do no i don't do the bedrooms have windows yes they do no they don't does chris live in a house yes he does no he doesn't does the house have a yard Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. We'll start on the left side of this chart. Let's look at the question, do you live in an apartment? The way we answer this type of question is by saying, 
yes, I do, or no, I don't. When responding to yes or no questions, we will typically answer in this way. It's important that we recall a rule that I explained a few lessons ago. The auxiliary to use when forming questions and short answers in the simple present is the following. For the pronouns I, you, we, and they, do or don't. For the pronouns he, she, and it, does or doesn't. Now, if you see the example, do the bedrooms have windows? Because we're talking about bedrooms, plural, we're going to use the pronoun they and the auxiliary do or don't. So the answer can be positive by saying, yes, they do. Or negative by saying, no, they don't. Let's analyze one more example. Does Chris live in a house? Because we're talking about Chris, singular, and third person, we're going to use the pronoun he and the auxiliary does or doesn't. So the answer can be positive by saying yes he does or negative by saying no he doesn't. Now it's your turn to practice by making yes or no questions and making short answers. Ask questions about the houses or apartments of your friends, relatives, and co-workers. And make short Okay, want to stop there because she is, I mean, he is saying some other things that are not related to you. Um, this part just is giving, he's giving instructions about the exercise I want to be working on. Okay, simple present short answers. Um, there you have, if you remember, we had been discussing this uh, in previous classes. Well, well, I guess it was the first topic we were discussing about the simple present. How to answer it uh, with yes, how to answer it with no. Two simple present tense. Uh, we will have simple present tense, in this case for regular words, like uh, the ones that we have here in this example. Um, and if these questions are just no question, we're gonna use the auxiliary uh, word in order to answer. For instance, if I, if I start my questions by saying, uh, do you live in an apartment? So, I'm gonna record the auxiliary word and gonna say yes, I do. So, oh no, I don't. In case of negative, we have negative answers. Um, in the second one, in second examples, you see that in the second example we're using a, a plural noun. Okay. So, in case we use plural noun, um, we have to use they in order to substitute the name instead of saying. The veterans do, so wanna use date in order to answer uh, these kind of questions. Like, for instance, uh, you see, you can read there, do the veterans have windows? Yes, they do, okay? Instead of saying, yes, the veterans do. So uh, that's the reason why uh, we, can use, we can use this kind of pronouns in order to substitute the, the nouns, okay? In the second part, ah, this is the first part, okay? The, the ones that we have on the left. Um, we use do why because we're using the pronouns I, you, we, and they. Okay, so we use do for pronouns like I, you, we, they. Okay, in the other side, we wanna write, we wanna um, check that we're using does. This is an auxiliary word that we use for third person singular. So does it mean that if we're gonna be using does, my answer is going to be with does too. In this case, it's going to be related to the pronoun that we have, uh, or, or the ones that we have to use for substitute the name uh, Chris. So instead of using Chris, when I use the pronoun he, uh, does Chris live in a house? Um, when I say yes, he does, or no, he doesn't. That's, that's the way that we're gonna be answering with this kind of questions for third person singular. The last one, last part that it says, does the house have a yard? 
So we're using an name too, but in this case, we're not talking about um, plural. So if we use just one name, in this case, house, not houses, house, we're going to use, because it's singular, we're gonna use the auxiliary does, okay? Third person singular, gonna be use, uh, uh, we're gonna be using um, does too, because it is part of it. So it is part of the third person um, singular pronoun, okay? So that, that's the reason why. Uh, we have questions there. Does the house have a chart? Yes, it does or no, it doesn't. So uh, it's different if we use the uh, in, if we use the nouns in plural. Si utilizamos los nombres en plurales, vamos a utilizar nosotros el they. Si utilizamos un nombre en singular, vamos a utilizar el it. Okay? So this is just something that we have, uh, I have to clarify. Um, in case we use, um, in case we use plural, we have to use do. In case we use singular, we have to use does or doesn't or don't. And then that depends on, on the questions we want to be uh, answering or, or creating. So waiting for an answer about that. Okay, so do you have any questions till this moment? Tienen alguna pregunta hasta este momento? Tienen alguna pregunta? No preguntas. Okay, si no hay preguntas, vamos a pasar al ejercicio que les, yo les dejé de tarea. Okay. Perdón. Dígame. Um, ¿Por qué, vaya, por ejemplo, en las dos preguntas de abajo dice do the bedrooms y en la de la parte dice does the house? Pero, o sea, ¿cuál es la diferencia? No, no. Vaya, no lo entiendo por qué do y por qué does. Sí, se parece. Ah, se parece, ¿verdad? Vaya, es bien sencilla la explicación de esto porque el do se utiliza con los plurales. Si usted lee aquí the bedrooms con S al final, indican que son más de, u, más de dos, ¿sí? En el segundo, que dice the house, se hace referencia singular, o sea, uno. Si nosotros utilizamos singular, vamos a utilizar el das, que es para tercera persona. Y en este caso, para singular, para crear esta, esta pregunta. En el caso de que nosotros utilicemos plural, vamos a utilizar el do. Lo mismo sucede para contestar. En lugar de decir the bedrooms o las habitaciones, nosotros vamos a referirnos a ellos como eh, ellos. O sea, vamos a eh, sustituirlo por un pronombre a la hora de contestar. Siempre en plural. Si es en plural, entonces utilizamos el do. Ahora, si es en singular, lo que nosotros vamos a estar trabajando, en este caso de house, eh, y a la hora de sustituirlo por un pronombre, eh, nos queda el it, pues este it es tercera persona singular, por ende, nosotros debemos utilizar el das, ¿sí? Tercera persona singular, utilizamos das, tercera persona plural, utilizamos do. Básicamente esa sería la regla. No sé si okay. queda claro. Sí, sí, gracias. Sí, muy bien. ¿Alguien más tiene preguntas? Preguntas, dudas, sugerencias. Teacher, no sé si también lo vamos a ver como más adelante, pero creo que en uno de los verbos se le puede agregar ese o se le quita eso. En eso es lo que tengo como un poco de duda. Sí, eso lo estuvimos cosa? viendo, lo estuvimos viendo creo la primera clase. No sé si estuvo en la primera clase usted. Creo que en la primera, no sé, en la clase. No, no, en esa, en la no, primera. No, no estuvo. Vale. Brevemente voy a, voy a hacer un stop por aquí y voy a explicar esa situación. Para hacer un, recapitular un poco sobre el uso de la S cuando es tercera persona. Eh, un segundito, voy a escribir el whiteboard. Voy a utilizar el whiteboard a mí y voy a escribir en él. Vale, teníamos nosotros... En el, esto sucede únicamente en el presente simple, ¿ok? Simple present. Vale, vean. En el presente simple, cuando nosotros utilizamos oraciones afirmativas, esto sucede únicamente en las oraciones afirmativas. Perdón. Esto no es afirmativo, esta es la cosa. Uh, afirmativo, vamos a utilizar este chiquecito, afirmativo. Y vamos a escribir por aquí, affirmative sentences. Sentences. 
Cuando nosotros utilizamos lo que es primera persona, segunda persona y tercera persona plural, nosotros vamos a utilizar la forma base del verbo. Voy a escribir por aquí un par de verbos como to work, to study, y voy a escribir por aquí to play. Vale, vamos a utilizar estos verbos de ejemplo. Ok. Um, cuando nosotros tenemos una oración afirmativa y utilizamos, por ejemplo, el pronombre I, que es de primera persona, voy a utilizar un verbo de los que tengo ejemplo aquí y escribo work. Aquí yo no utilizo, eh, no utilizo la S. I work in a bank. Bueno, vamos a escribir aquí. Vale, vean ahí. Ahí yo utilizo únicamente el verbo en su forma base. Sucede que, y eso lo explicaba ya en la clase, en, en la segunda clase creo, sucede que cuando nosotros utilizamos eh, cualquiera de estos pronombres, ya sea she, ya sea he, o ya sea it, nosotros debemos hacer uso de verbo de tercera persona. Vamos a escribir aquí, third person. Vaya. ¿A qué se le conoce eh, como verbo de tercera persona? El verbo de tercera persona son aquellos verbos a los cuales nosotros les agregamos el sufijo es o es, dependiendo de cómo se construya, o es en algunos casos. Um, por ejemplo, si en, yo construyo una oración, una oración cualquiera, vamos a escribir por acá. E inicio mi oración con she, que sería un, un, un pronombre de tercera persona. Tengo que escribir un verbo. En este caso, el verbo no va a ser en su forma base, porque voy a escribir. Voy a retomar el work. ¿okay? El work le debemos agregar una S para convertirlo en verbo de tercera persona. Esto únicamente ocurre si utilizamos uno de estos tres. Si ya sea she, ya sea he o sea it, se utilizan en una oración, nuestro verbo de, debe de llevar una S, una ES o una IES, dependiendo del verbo que utilicemos. Vamos a ver un poco de las reglas de, de, del uso de ello. Ahora, ¿qué puedo escribir como complemento? In avant, de igual, de igual forma, puedo complementar con eso. In a bank. Okay. She works in a bank. La primera, yo digo, I work in a bank. En la segunda yo digo, she works in a bank, or a bank. Muy bien, básicamente eso. Abajo. Si utilizo she, he, or it, utilizamos verbo de tercera persona. Los verbos de tercera persona son los que terminan en S. ¿Sí queda claro hasta ese punto? Sí, sí, gracias. Sí. Va, excelente. Ahora, hay otra excepción. Por ejemplo, si yo utilizo como nombre, como sujeto, Mario, y quiero escribirle mi verbo en su forma base, no se puede. ¿Por qué no se puede? Debo agregarle S porque Mario es, estoy hablando yo de una tercera persona, ¿sí? Una tercera persona, que en este caso, que es singular, es necesario utilizar de igual forma un verbo de tercera persona. Entonces, yo voy a utilizar el verbo en su forma base más la S. O digamos, quiero utilizar play. Le agrego también la S. ¿Sí? Eh, y construyo la oración y le agrego el complemento. Video game. Mario plays video games. Ahí está. ¿Vean? Ese es un ejemplo utilizando un nombre. ¿Qué pasa entonces eh, si yo utilizo dos nombres? Si digo Mario, Mario and Maria. Si yo utilizo dos por ser plurales, entonces voy a tener que utilizar mi verbo en su forma base. Es sencillo como eso. Si utilizo dos nombres en mi oración, voy a utilizar un verbo en su forma base. Así tal cual. Y puedo agregarle complemento. Mario en María, please, um, soccer. Así. Tal cual como lo tenemos ahí. ¿Sí? ¿Queda claro ahora? 
Sí, gracias, Ticha. Vale, muy bien, excelente. Cualquier cosa, no duden en preguntar, yo con todo gusto eh, puedo hacer una recapitulación de los temas que nosotros hemos estado trabajando anteriormente. Así que no duden en preguntar. Bien, continuemos entonces. Um, quiero mostrarles la pantalla nuevamente. Y nos vamos a mover a este. Bueno, tenemos en el 2.4 un ejercicio que dice Complete the conversation. Select the option that completes the two blank fields in each sentence or questions. Ahí tenemos nosotros la indicación, básicamente lo que vamos a hacer. Es como eh, un ejercicio de selección, de ver eh, cuál de esas dos eh, opciones corresponde pues, a, la, a la oración que se nos está mostrando en pantalla, en este caso de este ejercicio. Nos vamos a mover para la, sección, para la siguiente lección, perdón. Eh, porque es necesario pues, ir avanzando un poquito en lo que son las secciones. En la lección número eh, 2.5, we have um, a lesson objective there too. And it says, by the end of this class, you will learn vocabulary for furniture and other household items. It's going to be easy, okay? What I want you to do is to take note of this eh, vocabulary. Lo que sí me gustaría que ustedes hicieran eh, es que tomaran nota de este vocabulario, ¿sí? Y le dejas en un espacio, pues, para escribir el significado de, de cada uno de ellos. Si ustedes gustan, pues, pueden hacer eso. Si no, pues, utilicen otra, eh, otra alternativa. Pero sí, este vocabulario tratemos de guardarlo porque nos va a servir de ayuda para ir practicando eh, palabras en, en inglés y, e ir incrementando de igual forma nuestro vocabulario en inglés. So, pay attention to this part, ¿ok? I'm going to play this video. Gonna, before playing that video, I'm gonna check if I'm sharing the audio to you. Um, give me just one moment. Yes, I'm esto, sharing the audio. Pay attention. Sería, perdón, Ticha. Estos son como eh, muebles, sería el tema o algo así. Eh, no, estos son furniture. Furniture, ¿verdad? Sí, furniture. Ok, gracias. Muy bien. Hi everyone, in this class you'll learn vocabulary for furniture and other household items. Let's get started by listening and repeating the vocabulary. Armchairs, stove, curtains, pictures, clock, bed, table. Coffee table, microwave oven, refrigerator, lamps, sofa, desk, bookcase, dresser, chairs, mirror, rug, television. Other vocabulary that is important to understand is kitchen, dining room, living room, bedroom. Bien, vamos a comenzar por esta parte. Sí me gustaría, si tienen un cuadernito ahí a la mano, anoten estas palabras. Eh, les voy a dar unos dos minutitos para que lo copien. Estas palabras que están aquí. Copien. O tomen la captura, no sé, algo este, para guardarlo, como ustedes decían. Una vez lo tengan, levantan la mano para así avanzar. Una vez todos tengan levantada la mano, podemos avanzar. Por lo menos si la mayoría tiene levantada la mano, podemos avanzar. Disculpe, ¿y el dresser qué no? ¿Cómo es? ¿Cómo se llama? ¿Cuál? Dresser. Dresser, just let me. I can see here. 
Es como buró o algo así. No sé. Ah, usted dice el vestidor. Uh, este uh -huh. que está aquí. Este es un gavetero. Llama? Ajá, es un gavetero, vestidor. Dresser. Sí, este es el que utilizan para lo, cuando, lo, cuando los niños este, están pequeños. Es como un vestidor con gavetas. Se llama un vestidor o gavetero. ¿Qué sería en este caso los armchair? Serían como sofá de uno. Um, vamos a ver. Los armchair. Esos serían como, como sillones. Así se traduciría. Sillones. Por aquí está la. Aquí está. B. Es este que está aquí. Sillones. Ok. Creo que por aquí tienen, aquí a la derecha tienen el, el significado de cada, cada uno de los, eh, de los objetos que tenemos aquí, de los muebles que tenemos aquí. Okay, so do you finish? Yes, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So I want to stop this part and we're going to check um, the activity that I left uh, this past uh, Thursday. Okay, you remember, right? Um, bien, vamos a revisar un poco la parte de la lectura, el control de lectura que tuvimos del día jueves. No sé si recuerdan. Okay, first, what is the name of the church study? You remember the name of the church study? You remember the church study name? Claudia? You can you can open your microphone if you want. Rene? Mary and the Magical Forest. Okay, it was Murray in the Magical Forest. Does anyone here can tell me what happened in that church study? ¿Me podrían contar qué es lo que sucede en esa church study? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, any volunteer? Diego, do you read the study? Yeah. Yes. Can you tell me what is this study about? In Spanish. <laughs> no, in English. Must be in English. Please tell me what what you remember about the study. Um, uh, one children. Mm -hmm. uh, to the forest and magical. Okay, it's about <laughs> Mary and the in the magical forest. Okay, good. Uh, but what happened with that girl? Where does she live? Uh, Mirna. Where does she live? 
¿Dónde vive ella? Sydney. Sí, ah, okay. Thank uh, you. For... <laughs> yes, she lives in a small village. Um, what are the persons that lives with her? I mean, what are the people that lives with her? Teacher, no estuve en esa clase y aún no la he leído. No lo he leído. Okay. Es que no estuve el jueves. Okay. 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 Don't worry. Pero compartí el documento ahí en WhatsApp. Eh, trate de cargarlo y lo lee, ¿ok? Eh, veamos. Continuemos. Ever. ¿Con quién vive Mar eh, Mary? ¿Do you remember? Jonathan. Con su hermano creo que vive. But you must... You have to tell that answer in English. With your parents. Okay, with your parents and? Their brother. Their brother, yes, a brother. Okay. Is, is it Mary had a hard working girl? Yes or not? Yes. Yes, yes it yes. is, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Do we wake up um, early or late? Yes, she wake early. up early. She wake up early. Okay, good. Uh, does she help to her parents in the um, farm? The farm. Yes. Yes, what? Yes. ¿Cómo respondemos a los, a los yes no questions? ¿Solo se responde yes o qué se agrega? Yes, yes she does. Yes. yes, she does. Okay, good. Okay. What does um, Mary do in the afternoon? What she Mary? Go to school and play with your friends. Play with her, okay. She goes to school, right? To learn and play with her friends. Good. Okay. Um, let me, let me just ask you some more questions. When does Mary start her journey? Yes. When does Mary start her journey? When? Do you start in the forest? Okay, okay, good. Okay. Uh, if you remember, there is a part like uh, she um, asked her parents uh, for permission. So, since that moment, uh, desde ese momento, desde, desde el momento que ella pide permiso, since she... Uh, Request permission since uh, since she asked for permission. Okay, from that moment. Uh, let me ask you some other questions. For instance, what happened at the end? Can you tell me what happened at the end of the story? ¿Qué sucede al final? What happened at the end? And she lives happily ever after. <laughs> yes, yeah, she lives happily ever after. <laughs> yes, that, that the most stories ends with that. <laughs> With that, right? La mayoría de las historias terminan con eso. And she lives happily ever, I mean, happily ever, ever after. after. Okay? Most tales ends with that uh, phrase. Yeah. La mayoría de los, de los cuentos terminan con eso. Y vivieron felices por felices. siempre. En este caso, ella vivió feliz por siempre. So that's the end of the story, right? Okay, good. So we're going to see... Um, well, we're gonna be checking um, <clears throat> um, a lecture with like this for uh, each week. So on Thursday, gonna give you a different reading, but try to read the reading because it's important that way you're gonna be practicing your English. So um, I'm gonna give you that reading uh, this coming Thursday, okay? So, but it's gonna be a different one. Les voy a estar asignando una, este, una lectura. lectura. 
todos los jueves para que nosotros la trabajemos el fin de semana, viernes y el fin de semana y este, vengamos a hacer una actividad similar como la que tuvimos ahora. Yo les pregunto, ustedes me van a contestar sobre la historia que han leído. Así que este, tratemos de leerla, por favor, porque de esta manera practicamos eh, nuestro inglés. Ok, so, um, that's the end for uh, tonight's session. You know, um, time says it runs fast. We, you, if you say it is almost a night p.m. and uh, well, uh, some of you probably going to rest right now. Some of you um, just eh, solamente llegaron del trabajo, pues si se conectaron y ya es tiempo de descansar. Así que, eh, bueno, agradecerles su asistencia, por favor, no se pierda ninguna de las eh, sesiones que tenemos de inglés corporativo. Recuerden que este es un espacio para practicar, para conocer un poco sobre algunos temas eh, que se desarrollan en la plataforma. Traten de avanzar en la sección número dos, lo más que puedan. Eh, y para este próximo viernes, pues esperemos, perdón, este próximo sábado, Sábado, perdón, estoy totalmente confundido. Para este próximo jueves, esperemos eh, completar pues, ya la sección número 3. Así que, eh, sin más, pues me despido de ustedes. Pasen una feliz noche y bendiciones a todos. Cuídense mucho. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Take care.